Hello, this is Dominexus, and what you're seeing here is a voxelized sphere, a sphere made out of cubes. On January 1st, a man named Henry Segerman made a video about this type of sphere where he asked about the circles that appear on the surface. The video is very good and explains the matter very well, but unfortunately he left some critical questions unanswered. I want this video to serve as a sort of follow-up to his. In this video, I will tie up all the loose ends that were left and answer these three questions. What is the pattern of the centers of the circles? Are there infinitely many of them? And what is the pattern of their wave cycles? Along the way, I will also resolve some misconceptions about the matter that I found in the comment section. To help us on our journey, I have prepared a shader similar to the one that Mr. Segerman provided, but with more features to help us study the voxelized sphere. An important aspect is what happens when the sphere gets really big. The shader he provided has a restricted perspective, and so we were unable to see it beyond a certain point. To remedy this, I implemented a movable camera which we will use to look closely at the surface when it gets really big. We can also control the size of the sphere and pause the growth at any time we wish. Our journey will involve a series of observations about the sphere as we articulate exactly why a certain detail is a certain way. We will then make further observations about it and articulate those as well until we have answered all three questions. The first observation about the circles is why we see them in the first place. Looking closely at them, every circle contains a repeating linear pattern within its local area. The particular pattern varies from circle to circle. As Tristan Fredelius rightly pointed out in the comments, this is where the slope of the sphere is rational. The more complex the ratio, the more complex the pattern. Because of this, it follows that every possible rational slope has a circle associated with it, with many of the more complex ones only manifesting when the sphere is incredibly large. The question is, how do we access all these rational slopes? Simply put, every vector with integer coordinates. More specifically, those whose coordinates are all coprime because, for instance, the point 12, 8 has the same ratio as 3, 2. The set of these points encodes every rational slope that exists. When you take the set of points and normalize them onto the surface of the sphere, you get the pattern of circles. Let's apply the pattern to our shader by drawing a red dot on every circle. Right away, that answers two of our three questions. We now know their pattern, and we know that there must be infinitely many of them, as the set of rational slopes is also infinite. Likewise, the pattern, when carried out, is also fractal in nature. It's a little hard to appreciate from the outside, but on the inside, the pattern resembles the structure, when objects are regularly placed along the grid in a 3D space. This is no coincidence. This pattern appears directly because each integer grid node is directly associated with one of the circles. That leaves us with our cycle. Notice, each circle pulses out from the center at some rate. The rate of each circle remains consistent, but each one is slightly different from those around it. Some in the comments section have suggested that it has to do with the distance between the planes along the normal while it is expanding, making the diagonal ones pulse the fastest. But this isn't quite accurate because the fastest ones are the little ones in between everything else, the ones with more complex patterns. As Tristan again rightly pointed out, each of these circles has different phases. These phases are the different states of the cubes in the rational slope as it expands through them. The more complex the ratio, the more complex the pattern of voxels. The more regularity it contains, the more often the voxel pattern needs to update to coincide with the slope. As you can see from looking very closely at the sphere, a circle pulses every time the pattern on the inside is shifted when it passes from one phase into another. The question now is, how many phases does a given slope pass through in a particular period of time? To answer that, we first observe that a given rational slope is inscribed inside a rectangle with co-prime integer dimensions. These dimensions are the same coordinates as the grid node point the circle is associated with. The pattern is said to have looped when it has advanced enough to return to its initial phase. The slope moves in the direction perpendicular to itself when a point on the slope which starts on a grid node once again lands on a grid node. That is one complete cycle. Notice that the pattern of the voxels, the step sizes, follows a very specific set of rules, and this pattern tiles with the rectangle. When it enters a new phase, there's only one possible modification that can be made to ensure that it doesn't violate the pattern. This forces it to go through a very specific number of phases before it loops. 
the number of phases turns out to be exactly the magnitude of the vector squared, that is, the sum of the squares of their rectangle's dimensions. This means, as Alexander Varga rightly pointed out, that the frequency of a circle's wave pulse is a function of the magnitude of the integer vector it is associated with. Applying that to our shader, we can make each dot flash green when it passes into a new phase as determined by this function. Since each circle passes through n squared phases per distance n, the distance between phases is then the reciprocal of n. While the sphere is expanding, the radius will pass over multiples of this value regularly. When it does, the dot will flash green. This is also how we determine the size of the circle. By taking a circular cross-section of the sphere that is 1 over n deep, we can determine how big the circle should be. We can also not render the dot at all if the size of the cross-section is not large enough to show the pattern of voxels it contains. The greater the magnitude of the associated vector, the faster the circle will pulse, until eventually it pulses every frame of the simulation. When every dot is set to render at once, what we see is quite astonishing. If you have any issues with photosensitivity, look away now. So there we have it. We now know where the circles appear and why they pulse at their particular speeds. The critical aspect was the grid set of all points in 3D space with co-prime integer coordinates and their distance from the origin. Thank you Henry Segerman for making your video. You got everyone interested in math and that's always cool. Now if you'll excuse me, I have some Minecraft to do.